morning, good morning, and welcome, viewers from the different parts of the world, part of the globe. Welcome to our Sabbath school at Mavis Bank SDA Church. We welcome you and thank you for joining us. Let us pray to begin. Dear Father, thank you for this another day, another Sabbath day that we could come and worship, bow at your feet, and give you the praises that you deserve. Thank you for life. Thank you for everything. I pray that as we worship you in this manner, that you will accept our worship as we go forth. Bless us, keep us as we continue. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll now go to our opening song, number 249. again across the globe. I am Sister Jacob from the Mavis Bank SDA Church and we have with me Brother Stanford. He has done the, um, the welcome. Now in our lives we usually do accounting. Accounting brethren you cannot do anything without giving account for it. So it goes with our lives. We have to give account for our lives. Right? And I am going to give you a thought. And I want you to keep this thought in mind. Accounting is the only profession practiced on earth and in heaven. Because we must give an account. Account for all your actions on, e and on earth and account for the same in heaven. Notice, when you're doing accounting, you must have a balance sheet. Now, here is a balance sheet for our lives. Birth is your opening stock. What comes to you is 
your credit. What goes from you is your debit. Your ideas are your assets. Your, ba your bad habits are your liabilities. Your character is your capital. Your happiness is your profit. Your sorrow is your loss. Your knowledge is your investment. Your age is your depreciation. Death is your closing stock. God is your auditor. Always endeavor to have a perfect balance sheet because your auditor will come back sooner than later. Keep your books correctly. I hope we can put that in practice. At this time, we'll go straight to our lesson study. Yes, and so we're going to go through our, our lesson study for this week. For this week, we're looking at lesson three, right? Right, sister? We're looking at lesson three, and we're talking about um, Jesus and the apostles. This is what we're going to discuss um, for a few minutes. And as you out there um, in Radio Land, you can also follow in your, in your quarterly and, and you know, back up with the text that we are going to use and authenticate everything that we will be saying. Now, sis, we have for memory text, um, Matthew 4, verse 4, and it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of um, God. Uh, what I got from this is that it is, it is equally important to dwell on the word of God as it is equally important to eat. So both are, both are um, equal. Without, without the word of God, you won't be living. And without food, you won't be living. So we're looking at it as a balanced diet. And if we take away one part, then you know that it, is, it becomes imbalanced. What is your thought on this before we move on to Sunday? It said, the Bible said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, we notice in Psalms 119, verse 105, it tells about his word. His word is a lamp right. unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yes. Without it as a Christian, you cannot survive without the word of God. And God, when Christ came on earth, he showed us that we could not survive. Because when the temptation takes us, because we must get the trials and the temptation, the only thing we have to use, it is written. It yes. is written. And he, he shows us that on the... In the temptation story, he shows us that that's what he had to use when Christ, um, Satan... In order to defeat um, Satan. Satan tempted him. So it is important to balance our lives. Um, as we move on to Sunday, it is written, as we would have touched a little on that, it is written. What is written? The, the word. word. Yes? And in the beginning was the word right. and we will get there um, in a short while where we see that we cannot remove just not even one a little bit of the word of God if we remove it then our lives will be in balance so we're looking at that it is written and so right here it says that um, the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist marked the beginning of the Savior's ministry and in his ministry we will see that he uses the word the word, the word, the word um, to conquer the enemy. Now it is written. Some persons might say that the word of God is no longer binding. It, it has no use anymore. Or while some person will say um, the Bible is just a storybook. Really it's just a storybook like the other stories. What do you say about that? When Christ was on earth Remember, we, we didn't have the New Testament then. 
and he points the people back or even the Pharisees he point them back to the prophets and the law and that was the Bible Bible then the Old Testament it is written and most of what he quote it was from the New Testament, the whole Old Testament. Testament. Yes. Right? There is something here I need to say. It's that Jesus points back to the living word and its ultimate divine source. He affirms the authority of scripture. He always brings them back. When they question him, he brings in the scripture. He used the scriptures to defend what he's saying because that was authentic. Yes. And it is authentic today. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Right? And it said, Christ reminds us that true worship is focused on God and not on anyone else. And that submission to his word is true worship. So we have to worship him in spirit and in, and in truth. truth. In spirit and in truth is true worship. And we see, he, we see coming out here in Sunday's lessons too, is that um doubt is introduced by the by the enemy doubt yes. is introduced by the devil um to say to us that this is not credible the word of god is not credible and after all it is written by men by um men that are that were sinful yeah men that had issues and so why should we why should we really think of this book as the supreme and the word of god and it is written by um, men that's what um the devil says uh, just to put doubt in our mind and we see further in the lesson too that he used it even on Jesus himself if you are the son of man so he's putting doubt um, yeah. in, in God's mind well of, of course that didn't work um, on, on Jesus but that is what the enemy uses on us doubt should we trust the word of God is it, is it, is it really the book um, for us to live by but when we, when, we, when we study the word of God you know you are closer drawn by studying the word of God you are closer drawn and you see yourself less self will have to die in the presence of God right and when, when, when the enemy comes to Christ with the word remember now, your remember now brethren the enemy studied the word also it's not you alone study it he studies the word so he knows what to come to you with because he knows your weak spot. Right? So what he tests Christ with, Christ was just giving us an example there of what the devil will test you with mostly. Appetite. Mm -hmm. Right? The three doors. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. To your soul. Mm -hmm. And it is the, the, the pride of life, the loss of the flesh, and the loss of... And the the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those are three avenues, three doors that are open to the enemy. So we need to close them by the word of God. That's the only thing can close them, the word of God. And when we stop doubting the word of God, then we'll gain power. Because if, you, if it says, thus saith the Lord, and we believe that, yes, this is what God says, then we dispel this whole thought of um, it not being authentic. Yeah, and as we see, this is what God used to defeat the enemy. And if he is our example, then it must be that this is what we are going to use to defeat um, our enemy, which is the enemy of God. Also, um, when we look at it, when we look, we see that he manipulated um, the, the scriptures too, just to fit his his time. He also caused us to manipulate the scripture to fit our situation too so when we look at the some persons say that okay the, the old testament is done away with mm. we don't need to use the old testament anymore but we must know and see that the enemy is working to destroy the foundation and the character of god where does the character of god land where is the law of god is it in the new testament or is it founded um in the old testament so he wants to destroy all of that. And if you remove all of that, then it might as well we go on living like um, animals because we would have no law to govern us. And so he tries to, to destroy that and try to rub it out, erase it from our memory. What do you have to say? I want to comment on something here. 
talk about obedience yeah. Jesus taught his disciples obedience to the word of God and the law right back then in the Old Testament while they were wandering through the wilderness and they got the commandment he said to bind them bind them teach your children you know that Moses would um, Abraham would teach his children and he said to bind them use them as frontlet yes. that every time you are to, about to do anything wrong the law would present itself right he goes as far as to say when you make your clothes put on the sleeve bound the sleeve with a ribbon of blue you understand it and we know blue mm -hmm. is blue reminds us of obedience blue the color blue signifies obedience, obedience. So if you stretch your hand to steal something, it's the blue is there to remind us that we should not steal. Yes. Right? The same thing on the M of the garment, blue again. So you can't go to your neighbor's house, walk over to do anything wrong <laughs> because the blue is there to remind there us. To remind. So he's reminding us about our obedience because we're not going to heaven without obedience. Yes. Obedience to his law. We have to obey the law of God. Yes, and for those who are still in doubt, says that without faith, it is impossible to, to please, please God. God. And so we have to have faith in his words and know that thus saith the Lord. Um, I think one, re one, one um, reviewer said that we should, not, we should not search the scripture to find what we want to find. No. But we should search the scripture to find the man of the scripture. Right. Yeah. So we don't go there to find, okay, yeah, we can, we can do this, we can do that. Just, for example, we find something that says, rise, Peter, kill and eat, and it fits us. And so we'll just say, okay, we can eat anything. Because the Bible said Because that. the Bible said we must rise, kill and eat. But we must look for God himself in his word. And when you find him, then he will, he will direct you as to what to do. Now, some persons will say that some things are irrelevant. Um... Reviewers said also that, listen, it, is, it looks irrelevant to us as humans, but if all scriptures were given under inspiration, it means that every word is important. Every word in the Bible is important because it is given under inspiration. And God thought of everything before he placed it in the, in his, in the book. Yeah? And so... As we move on, Jesus and all scriptures, how did he, um, how did he, did he use the scripture? How did he treat the scripture? Did he add, did he take away, did, did, did he, he's not come to, to destroy the scripture or to destroy the word of God, but do what? Yes, sis. If you notice that he, he talk about the scripture, he said the prophets, the law, and the Psalms. And we know the books of Moses, the, 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 the five books that he wrote, then mm -hmm. the prophets, then we have the Psalms. And in the Psalms, you see that he, he was spoken about almost all the Psalms, everything. Mm -hmm. Right? You have from Psalms 22 right to 26, talk about the sanctuary message. In Psalms 22, he was, he, he, it was spoken of him being slain, where they cast lot. Mm -hmm. And we see that it's a prof prophetic psalms, right? We, we go again, Psalms, um, Isaiah chapter 53, the whole of Isaiah chapter 53, it was speaking about his birth, his resurrection, his, his death, his resurrection. You understand? Yeah. It goes as far to tell us that in the tomb, a rich man's tomb, right? It tells you all of that, the whole thing, right? And it goes again from Psalms 22 right to 26. It's talking about Christ, Christ, Christ. And tell you about even how he was sold, how much he was sold for. So they have no reason to say he was not the Christ. Because if they had followed the scripture, they would have said, they would have proven and know that, yes, this is the Messiah. Because it was spoken of him yes. in, the, in the book of Moses, the branch, in the, in the Psalms, and in the prophets. But the arm... Um I think it is the same thing um, in today's world too, where we sit down and we study the scriptures and we study and we study and we study. And when whatever is being done 
from the same Bible that we have studied and we are looking for signs we, the, the Bible tells us the signs and we are looking the signs are happening and we are still looking so is it that we are just gathering information or is it that we are not we are just gathering information and not applying um, and is it that we are not looking for the right thing because the things are happening and since people say that it's just a storybook but I would add that it is a storybook yes but it's a true storybook it is one that we can follow it is one that tells us about um, history and future and what we have seen in, in the past tells us that we can trust this book yes. and up to today's day we can still trust the book because it tells us that these things will happen and it is happening yes um, Jesus proceed history mm -hmm. right he was before history you understand yes. Virgin? he was before there's a story in the Bible where the Pharisees um, you know they always plan to think they are so smart wise, wise. <laughs> yes. and they mm -hmm. always come to Christ with some story yes and ask him right and yeah if he if he is so is as if Christ is acting as he know more than mm -hmm. Abraham do you know more than our father Abraham, Abraham. Mm -hmm. I said before Abraham, I was. Was. <laughs> I am. You understand? Yeah. The great, the I am principle, mm -hmm. brethren. Yes. Because if he is the I am, I'm not putting a doubt there. Yeah. If he's the I am, then he's everything. Because I am the rose of Sharon. I am the king of kings. I am the, the I am. So when he told him that before Abraham was, I am. And if you and realize, baffle them. if you realize before you, you understand. go further, if you realize with the I am, the I am suggests that he is all it, ways. It, yes, I am. He never, he never used it, the was. No. So he said, it's not I, I am. was. I am. And in every dispensation, he, I am. He's always, he's always, always. I am. He is. So don't, don't play with our God he's in our mince words. <laughs> and he knows exactly what he's doing. He, yes. he, he, you, you understand, Regine? Mm -hmm. And and that is what there are some things here that I notice in, in Matthew. Mm -hmm. This question. How did Jesus understood historical persons and events of the Bible? Yes. And in Matthew twelve he talks about David. And De Jesus came out of the lineage of David. And David, yes. Right? One one asks him about David, if he's David's father. Son. <laughs> And Christ, Christ said to him, My Lord said unto my Lord. Then if David can say that his Lord said, and that means that Christ is higher than him. So he <laughs> always <laughs> have them, you understand, Bridget? Yeah, they're it, always they, yes. baffled by his answer. Right. Yeah. And to, mm -hmm. what they're saying, they are old men, Pharisees. And they are philosophers. And right. Yeah, did you go to the school that we went? Right. So they are, yeah, they are still, you know, baffled. As you say, and are you as old as we are? And, and know so much things. So it's good to feed upon the word of God. Yes. You understand? And when we do that, and we must realize that when we do, when we study, we must look for the signs and apply them. Because they were studying, but were they applying the signs? And Jesus was right in the midst, and they did not realize. Because what they were just only studying. Yes. They were only studying the scriptures, but they, they weren't applying it. And they weren't saying, okay, if he knows that, then it simply means that this is, you know, so and so but we were, they weren't looking at that they were just looking at the, the, the knowledge that they had because yeah. when he went into the, the cornfield and plucked the ear of corn for his disciple the pharisees weren't pleased about that yeah because according yeah. to the word yes they, you know, he couldn't do that but he showed them from mm -hmm. the bible he said david went into the sanctuary and he ate the bread <laughs> and the bread was for the bread. and it was not the common bread that he ate mm -hmm. it was a shoe bread Right? And, and he wasn't alone. even a priest. You understand? So, so, so you. Christ, what is showing mm -hmm. them that I came out of the lineage of, a, of David. Exactly. Right? And exactly. David wasn't a priest and he ate it. I am the high priest. So you, you, you understand? <laughs> you understand exactly. so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, and we, we cannot, that's why we cannot put God, we cannot put Jesus in a box. He's always outside of the norm, what we used to. Yeah? 
So, okay, we, we, they're saying that, okay, you should not break the corn on the Sabbath, and we should not right. do this, and we should not do that. But he saw the need to do it, and so he did it. And so that is out, really outside of our realm. And we are, we are now saying that he's breaking the law because you should not be doing that on this specific day. And when we go further, we realize that, yes, they were looking for a king that would be um, attended by servants and, yeah. of, and all. And you realize that he was the suffering king. Outside the norm, that was never um, to be done. That was never seen in history. Because if you're a king, you will always have your servants, and, and persons attending to you. But we'll see further down where he is now attending <laughs> to um, but, the people. But the true king of Israel, you know, the true king of Israel must ride on an ass. Although he's a king, but if he's the true one, yes. because remember in, when David's son, a man was about to overthrow David to mm -hmm. usurp the throne, he went on a horse, which mm -hmm. was not the norm, the true king. Mm -hmm. And what David said, Solomon, go on my ass. That's the true king. When Jesus came, he came riding on us. So he's the true king. You understand? And there's something here in, in, in Mark 10. He's talking about that. Um, the Pharisees came to him about divorce. And he said, yes. <laughs> God told Moses to write them a divorce. But in the beginning, it was not so. It is because of the hardness of your heart. Why you tell him to write the divorce? So, what he's, talk, what he's telling us, we should always forgive. Forgiveness is because Christ is love. And in, in love, you must forgive. Right? Yeah. You cannot say you love and don't and forgive. Don't forgive. Forgiveness no is the key. Because you're not going to heaven with no unconfessed sin on your books. So you have to forgive. Right there and then and there. You're so that is what he said. It's happen. because of the hardness of your heart while Moses was commanded to write a bill of divorcement. And, and so when we, and we see that when Christ or um, Jesus answered these people, definite answers, no more comment. That's how it works. Yes. Definite Shut answers, no more comment. And that's why I think that we should not be going into any... Um, debate with people when it comes to the word of God. We should not be debating it. Just, just tell it and thus sit the Lord and that is it. When we when we when we when we um start to debate then we find we find that loopholes are there for us to make errors. Yeah? And it's, it's not a game. It's not a game where you're scoring any points. <laughs> so you're saying okay I, I, I get this point, you get that point. So it's not, like, it's not a game. Thus say the Lord, and that is it. So don't leave any room for persons to say, but, you know, I could debate this. I could, you know, it was not so. Don't give them that. When Jesus used the word, um, when he said that it is written, it is there. And when he used it against Satan, he could not do anything else but to flee. And so it tells me that when you use the word of God and you constantly say it and use it, then the devil will flee. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to be tempted forever. We just have to stick it out. We have to just know that, okay, at some point he will give up. Yeah? And so as we move on to, as we move on to um, the next, so we're looking at what? Um, the yes, apostle yeah. and the Bible? Yes. The apostle and the Bible. It says that the New Testament writers approach the Bible the same way that Jesus does um, in matters of the doctrine, ethics, and um, prophetic fulfillment. The Old Testament for them was the authoritative word of God. We find nothing anywhere in, the, in what these men say or do that challenges either the authority or the authenticity of any part of the Bible. So in other words, what they're saying here, what this reading is saying that they did not see the Old Testament as more powerful than the New and they did not see the New as more powerful than the Old. So it is all God's Word and there, everything is important. None is to be taken out and all is to be used 
to guide our lives on this planet? What do you have to say? Um, when the, after the resurrection of Jesus, two men were walking and talking about the, the whole um, saga of the crucifixion of Christ. And they were talking and talking. Another person joined them. And they were talking and the person asked, what, what are you saying? He said, what, where were you? you? Didn't you hear of what take place? He said, no, you know, but it was Christ. And I said, that is something. I just love that little story. It mm -hmm. tells me that in the midst of everything, Christ is there, the unseen listener. The unseen um, person there is always there listening to our prayers, to our stories. So everything that we speak, Christ is there. He knows what you are talking about. And what, after he expounded the scripture to them, he said after he opened the scripture to them, their eyes were open. That just, that, at that time, after, after he expounded, yes. don't you believe what was written in the book of the prophets, the Psalms, and the law about him? After he expounded the scripture to them, he vanished. Their eyes open after that. after that. Didn't our heart burn within us? Yeah. You understand? Sometimes mm. when you're reading the words, brethren, you want to sleep and can't even sleep yeah. because it is so sweet. You can't put it down. Because when you're reading, you know, and if something is very interesting, you're not going to put it down. Mm -hmm. So if it interests you, then you will read. But if it don't interest you, you're not going to read. So that is why we have the problem with, with our brethren not reading the scriptures they ought to. The first time Adventists, you know, you couldn't, when you see them, you're free to walk my Bible with them, you know. Well, I but we're not studying as first time. We are not studying. And, you know, young people would say that, listen, we have enough things to oh, occupy yes. our time. And oh, we have the Bible on our, at our fingertips. So if we need to know mm -hmm. something, we can go, bam, and get it. But digging into the word, is what helps because very soon we won't have these things. Ah, so very soon we won't yes. have these things to, to, to use. And so and that is another ploy, that is another deception of the enemy to tell us that oh you will always have it. You, it is mm -hmm. always at your fingertip. And he knows that one day yes. you will not have it. And then if you don't have anything in your head, you can't rely on anything. Mm -hmm. Because if there's if it's not in your head, it's just not in your head. It cannot come back. It cannot come back. It's just like studying in a secular world. Yeah? So then in the secular world, you, you cannot go to your bed tomorrow morning, um, have an exam tomorrow, and you never study all the time. And then you, go, you pray tonight, God help me to do this. And, and you didn't do anything. <laughs> you didn't help yourself. And you expect God to just put it in your head and get it done for you. It's not going to work like that. And it's the same thing with the scripture. We'll have to, we'll have to dig deep because something that came out, in, out of this lesson too is that God does not force people. He will never force you to, to say, study the scripture to do that. He will allow you to make your own decision. And when you do that, then he'll help you along the way. That's just it. That is just it. If, if, um, if God was in this business of forcing people, you know what? Everybody would be saved. Because that is his aim, to save everybody. Yes. And if that was his intention to, um, to force things on us, then he would save everybody. Everybody would be saved. But it's based on our choices, it's based on our decision that we will end up whether hell or heaven. That's just it. And as we, as we continue to look at the apostles and how they deal with scripture, we will have to take the same approach. And it doesn't matter what we see outside there in the world, um, in terms of who taking out parts of whatever and who, who um, you know, vanishing parts. Some persons, they say, okay, the Old Testament is out, so I'm going to tear out that part. I'm going to look at only the New Testament. You must know for yourself that the entire Bible is written under inspiration and it is the word of God and none is to be erased. And as we go throughout, this is what we should use, the word of God. It's no debate. It's the word of God to help us, not to debate with people, but to help us and to guide us against the enemy. And that is what God used, the words against the enemy. And that is what we're going to have to use in order to, to, um, to win this battle. Yes, sis? Well, we're going to close. I just want to leave this closing Psalms with us. Because this time that we are in, 
the time that we are in now brethren we need the lord as our shepherd because what is upon us at this time what the world is going through now the only person we can look to is christ and i just want to leave the psalms 23 with us this morning as we close out from sabbath school the lord is my shepherd mm -hmm. and that's relationship i shall not want that's supply he make it me to lie down in green pastures that's rest he lead me beside still waters that's refreshment he restored my soul that's healing he lead me in the paths of righteousness that's guidance for his name's sake that's purpose yea do i walk in the valley of the shadow of death that's challenge i will fear no evil that's assurance for the art with me that's fulfill that's faithfulness thy rod and thy staff they comfort me that's shelter thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies that's hope thou anointest my head with oil that's consecration my cup run it over that's abundance surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life that's blessing and i will dwell in the house of the lord that's security forever and ever that's eternity thank you very much and as we goodbye. and we we have had a very very interesting lesson on this um the sabbath day Thank you for joining us um, for Sabbath School this morning. I hope you have learned a lot. I hope that you will, um, we all will put this word into practice and know that the word of God is our weapon against the enemy. See you next week, same time, same place. Thank you. As we say bye, As from, we say Sabbath bye school. from Sabbath School. Thank you.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome again. We will be doing our song service. We will start with number 520 from the email. He hide it my soul. till I come. Till I come, 
confirmation of faith comes to us from the book of Revelation 14, verses 6 to 12. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him. For the hour of the judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea and the fountain of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city is fallen, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast, and in his image ye receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the life of his indignation, and ye shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of his torment ascended up for ever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth his mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saint. Here are they that keep the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know he that the Lord he is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into its courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generation. The church is now called to worship. God and our Father, we come before you another Sabbath day, unworthy and undone. As we come into your presence, I pray that you will forgive us all our sins, be in our midst, grant us a day's blessing, in Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn will be 617, We Are Living, We Are Dwelling. Spirit, 
deceiver of the world. He who has the blessed Jesus was his deadly weapons now. Come and win on once in power, knowing that his reign will cease. When the kingdom shall be given to the mighty prince of Let us pray. Now, dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and mind far away from the press of the world to your throne above. Mighty God and Father, we thank you once more. We praise your name. We adore you for the opportunity to be in your presence. Dear Father, there is nothing that we can do and there is nothing that we'll be able to do to earn this merit. But because of your love, because of your tender care towards us, you have given us the privilege to bow before you, to be in your presence, the King of the universe, the Lord of Lords, the one that is self-sustained, the one that can make something out of nothing. And we thank you, God, for giving us feeble mortal clay the opportunity to be before you. We thank you. Dear Father, we I put the sick before you. Those who are ailing at this time and seeking so many. God, you are the doctor. You created everything on this planet and you created us and so you know what can heal and what will heal. And so I ask that you will visit the sick at this point in time. Give them relief wherever it's necessary. And help them to trust you. Help them to look up. Because that's where our redemption comes. I thank you for hearing and answering such a prayer. Dear Father, we're in a crisis. There's, this did not surprise you. It is not a surprising matter to you. But as humans, dear Father, we are worried. We are stressed out, even though you have said it to us. But we pray and we ask for your presence during this time. Dear Father, for those who are really out of it, for those who don't know what to do, be their shield, be their guide at this time. Dear Father, you said that you will not leave us alone, you will not forsake us. And so we trust in your words. And we trust that you will be with us. And we thank you for answering such a prayer. Dear Father, your people bow before you at this time. We cannot gather as we want to, to worship you. But wherever we are, we can always call on your name. And we thank you for such an opportunity that we don't need to carry a dove. We don't need to, we don't need to go to so, a specific place to call on your name. We thank you for such a privilege. We pray that as Christians call on your name at this time. Turn not away your ears, but help us as we ask and as we call on you. God, hear, answer for us at this time. Dear Father, your man servant that you have sent, you always have someone to give us a message. And so I pray that you will empower him. You will tell him what to say. And so as we listen and as the people out there viewing, listen, they too will be blessed in a time such as this. God, hear, answer our prayers. 
Turn us not away because of our sinful action, but grant us peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God is good. And all the time, all my viewers out there in the radio land, God is good. I saw a blind man, he could not see, losing his way, as he go along, then tears fill my eyes. I said I'm sorry for you He said up in heaven I'm gonna see just like you I will see all my friends Over in hallelujah square what a glorious time We will all up, up there We will sing and praise Jesus His glory will share And it won't be no blind man In the hour then I saw a cripple, he could not walk, he could not walk, as we do on the street, then Fill my eyes. I said I'm sorry for you. He said, Oh, hope in heaven, I'm gonna walk just like you. I will see all my friends over in all. Square. What a glorious time We will all up, up there We will sing and praise Jesus His glory will share And it won't And it won't be no blind man I said it won't be no cripple In the hallelujah square Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Father God in heaven, we give you thanks and praise for the privilege to be in your courts on the Sabbath day. We bless your name, Lord. We honor your name, Lord. We magnify, we glorify 
We lift your name on high. You are God. You are God alone. You came out on this balcony of nothingness and you created this vast universe and the springs of living water. What a mighty God you are. You are from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. You are in control. You are God all by yourself. You are the great and dreadful God who parted the Red Sea with a blast from your nostril. You are God. You are Jehovah God. You are the re resurrected Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So we come before you now, God. We claim your glory, your might, your power. How mighty you are. You are God. You are holy. You are righteous. You, God, are from everlasting to everlasting. Father God, the world is in turmoil, God. The world is in great turmoil. Pestilence has taken over, God. And so, mighty God, we know, Jehovah God, that you are in control. Lord God of heaven and hurt, Father, we call on your name. We call on your name, God. We ask that people should look up to you because redemption don't die. People from every walks of life should look to you because redemption draweth nigh. Although you are in control, God, but Lord, you want your glory. You must get your glory from this. Whatever the enemy has set up, you must get your glory, Lord. And today, God, we come we come knowing, we come knowing purposely that you are God and you are in control. You are in control, Lord. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you will intercede on behalf of all the people of the, the, the Americas, Canada. Our people are there. Our families are there, Lord. We ask God that you heal some are in the intensive care unit, God. Some are in the hospital. Jesus, some of them are at home, Lord. They are burdened. But you say we are to hope. Hope thou in God. Hope thou in King Jesus. Father, this COVID pestilence, Lord, is wreaking havoc, God. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you will place a mark around our people, Jesus. Just as you place the mark on the door of the Egyptian and the Israelite in Egypt, Lord. We ask you, God, that you will go from every house, God, and place a mark. We ask you to go into IC unit at the university hospital. We ask you, Lord, to go to KPH, to go wherever, Cornwall Regional, the frontline workers, the health, the, the, the nurses, the doctors, every individual the policemen the soldiers that are out there mighty god we present them before you this morning we ask for your protection we ask for your guidance we ask god that you will protect them in this time of turmoil jesus we ask that we present the government of the day in your hand the prime minister they are worried they are frustrated jesus you are the answer help them to know, to look to you. Because you are the way maker. You can deliver. You have overcome in power. Lord, we present the minister of health and the health work and the ministry, dear Jesus. We present them before you, God. We ask that you will touch them with your blood. Give them vision. Lord, and help them to see that they can't manage this pandemic. It is greater than them. They need you. They need Jesus. They need the triune Godhead to come down. To step down on earth. And to give answer. Oh Father God. Oh God of heaven and earth Jesus. Lord God help some dying soul today. Help some dying members today Lord. To make it in, in the kingdom God. Help them Jesus. Speak to somebody's heart. Who is dying right now of COVID-19 Lord. Lord Jesus touch down God and your people. 
Remember your pastors, your leaders across the length and breadth of our island. Remember them in Amakwe, God. You will anoint them. You will consecrate them, Lord. Help our members who are at home, God, that they must hope in King Jesus. They must lift their thought heavenward. They are in curfew, are in lockdown. But mighty God, they can call on you. Call on the name of the resurrected Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He hears and he answers. Jesus hears and he answers prayer in a peculiar way. Call on him. Call on him. Call on him. Hallelujah. 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 Call on him. Call on him. He will hear and he will answer you. He wants you to turn to him. He wants you to look to him because he has the answer. Look to him. Look to him. We are living in a grand and awful time. What a dread time we are living. But it's only the beginning of sorrows. So we must look up. Look up. Because our redemption joy at night. Father, take over. Father, take control, God. Father, reassure us. May your Holy Spirit continue to war hearts and bless us and consecrate us and help us to stay focused on you, Lord. Stay focused on the name of the resurrected Jesus Christ. Lord, hear our prayer today, God. Lord, remember us in a very special and a very marked way, Lord. We call on you, God. We have no other help. Doctors are failing. Governments fail. But we only have Jesus Christ, the resurrected Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Only you, you alone, God, is worthy. Bless your nation. Bless your people, God. Bless them, Lord. And give them hope, mighty God. God of Daniel and God of the Hebrew boys. We bless them. Bless them today, Lord. Bless them, God. It's a calling. It's a calling out. It's a calling out. And the sealing is taking place right now. So, Lord God, hear and answer our prayer. Hear and be with us, Lord. And bless us tremendously, Lord. Take care, Lord. Protect us, Lord. Draw that bloodline around us, Lord. And help us. Help us to be saved. In your kingdom when you come in the name of the resurrected jesus christ of nazareth and upon the authority of the word of the living god amen and amen happy sabbath everyone i want to welcome you this morning to the 16th sabbath of the year and our third sabbath of the second quarter and we know that though things are trying in this time, we know that our God still lives, right? And he still provides. So it doesn't matter the situation. We need to give thanks for the fact that we have life. We have strength. We can still call on our brethren, right? And ask if they're okay, don't it? And we can still praise God despite all that is happening this morning. This morning, I want to send a special welcome to the Executive Secretary of the East Jamaica Conference who has sent commendation for the program that we are now doing, the fact that we are streaming live and we are touching so many souls over the horizons. We want to thank God for all that he has done. We want to thank the other viewers, welcome the other viewers who are joining us from England, U.S., to, um, we have persons in Jamaica, Hagley's Gap, Mavis Bank, and all around the surrounding, tuning in this morning to hear the good gospel of Jesus Christ. It is my privilege also to introduce the speaker for this morning. He's no other than Professor Colin Giles. And when I asked him for just a few words, he gave me something to, to read, and he said, don't say, any, don't say everything. So I'm going to try and summarize it as much as possible. Well, he's a lecturer for one. He's a scientist and he's an academic administrator for over 30 years at the University of Technology, right? He's now the acting president of the University of Technology also. Most importantly, he is a man of God. He's a Christian 
and he is a third generation Seventh-day Adventist who were brought up by Seventh-day Adventist godly parents. He is presently worshiping at the Andrew Seventh-day Adventist Church in Kingston, where he served as youth leader, personal ministry leader, and elder in the church, and presently teaches in the Sabbath school and serves on the education commitment at the Andrew Church. We welcome Daniel and Kristen, and he, they too love the Lord. We want to welcome Brother Giles to the Mavis, da Mavis Bank Seventh-day Adventist Church along with his daughter, and we invite you to say a prayer in your heart that the Lord will bless and keep them. We want to also, as he comes, to just whisper a word in your heart for him, and do not look at the man, but rather listen to the message that he's bringing to us this morning. Have a good have a blessed day and before he comes we'll have sister the scripture reading will be will be done by sister monique and then we'll have a special by sister Kristen campbell the scripture reading comes to us from luke 21 verses 25 to 28 and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea the sea and the waves roaring men's heart failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then they shall see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory and when these things begin to come to pass then Look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Here endeth a portion of God's holy word. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2.
the angels shall shout the sound of his coming the sleeping shall say all the time all the time we always say God is good we thank the Lord that we are here on this another Sabbath day to worship him the Lord says that the day cometh when the true worshipers will worship him in spirit and in truth this is such a time. Although circumstances change, we lift our hearts to God. We shall behold him. What a wonderful song. Thank you very much, my sister, for giving us that lovely song of meditation. I invite you, whether you're here with us, the few of us who are here, or you're in cyberspace, in your home, or wherever you are, we invite you to join us in prayer as we seek the Lord's face. Let us pray. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your love and mercies. We thank you for your blessings. At such a time as this, we come to you, dear Father, knowing 
that you are God. Knowing that you love us and care for us. As we are told in scripture, if God spared not his only begotten son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also give us freely all things? Dear Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. We humbly ask for your Holy Spirit to abide with us at this time, to touch our hearts, to give us hope. Dear Father, we commit into your hands at this time every person who is within the hearing of my voice through cyberspace or whatever mode or mechanism. We are asking you to help that your word will go forth with power and clarity and that souls will be won to your kingdom and that souls will find hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The songwriter tells us, We are living, we are dwelling, in a grand and awful time, in an age on ages telling, to be living is sublime. Sublime. Why? Because the things that are happening, although they are not pleasant, they should signal to us that we should look up because our redemption draws near. I've chosen to entitle my message this morning, Look Up. Just early in the week, someone said, you know, I can't take it anymore. Too much bad news. I can't bear it anymore. People are sick. People are dying. It is distressing. Life has changed rather quickly. There is uncertainty. Many are fearful. Many are distressed. The entire world is in turmoil. Sadly, some of us who are even listening at this time have already lost loved ones. We mourn with you. Some are sick. This COVID-19 pandemic has taken the world by surprise. Even those of us who have been watching the signs and we know that these things would happen because they were prophesied. Even we are distressed and rightly so because we have the mind of Christ and we are told that our Savior when he trod this earth nearly 2,000 years ago he was touched with the feeling of our infirmities and that is why we have the assurance that when we pray to him he understands and he makes intercession for us and he's able to succor us or bear us up because he wept often when he saw the distress among humanity and I'm just saying that we are living in a time that tries our faith to the utmost the question is what is next what should we do now 
Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, all. I really wish to God that I could tell you that it will be peace and safety. I really wish from the bottom of my, from the bottom of my heart that I could say to you that never mind. It will soon be gone. Life will get back to normal. We'll all be happy and unki dory again. I wish I could tell you that. I hope we have a little more reprieve. I really do hope. But the truth is, the Bible tells us that things might actually get worse. And I'm not speaking specifically of this COVID-19 pandemic. Because we are hoping for the best. We are hoping that by practicing proper hygiene, we are hoping that by practicing social distancing, we are hoping that by healthful living, we are hoping that through the knowledge that God has given health practitioners, we might get over this one. We are hoping. That is my hope. But the truth is, even if we do, there is more to come. This one might not be the last one. I invite you to turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 24. Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives and his disciples came to him and they asked, Master, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. And then he goes on to say, he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that he be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences. COVID-19, the novel coronavirus is a pestilence. And there are others. We, are see, we have seen a number of them. We didn't know that this one would have turned the world upside down so much. We are told there will be earthquakes in diverse places. Then the Lord, I imagine, he must have said it sorrowfully. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And that is why I say to you, I wished I could say to you, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that never mind, it will soon be over. This one will just pass and everything will be all right. Jesus said, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Because there's another dimension. He says, verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And he shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Sometimes the distress 
of the pestilences and the things that are outside of our control sometimes those are not the worst part of it but sometimes the human reaction is that which creates even more distress I was so saddened when I heard that someone who was working at the call center where a number of persons were found to be infected with the virus. He went home under quarantine at his house and people went to his house to kill him. And when he attempted to escape, he jumped in his car to escape. In the panic and the distress, he crashed. And the people were not satisfied. They ran him down and they stabbed him up to death. What has happened to the heart of man? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Jesus said that because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Jesus went on to say, but pray ye, verse 20, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath is a sign that we acknowledge God as the creator. And so, even although there is distress around us, God invites us to come aside. Step back a little from the distress around us. Turn our hearts and our eyes to him and find hope. And that is what the Sabbath is all about. It is a time of refreshing to renew our spirits because if we focus on the terrible issues continuously that alone will kill us. We need to take time out. And so I appeal to the powers that be in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us be mindful that time as such as God has set aside should be allowed for his people which can be all of us he wants all of us to be his people such that his people can rest on the Sabbath let us not make the Sabbath the only shopping day or arrange things in such a way that persons feel forced in order to live that they have to break the Sabbath because Jesus said that distress would come but we should pray that our flight be not in the winter neither on the Sabbath because God wants us to remember that he is the creator and that he's bigger than the pandemic. He's bigger than all the issues that we face. He doesn't want us. To forget. Him. As our source of strength. So. First the calm. Then the storm. 
But thank God that's not the end of it. Then the deliverance. We don't know if there will be an eye in the storm. I don't know if we'll get a break at this point or sometime shortly from this present storm. But we know that ultimately whether the storm intensifies or there's a lull before intensifying again we know that ultimately there will be deliverance and that is the hope that I hold before you today look up because life is more than the here and no projections are that things will get worse both from the experts and also from scripture we are told in Luke 21 Reading from verse 25, it says, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations. We are seeing it around us. Aren't nations perplexed? Aren't nations distressed? Upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. We have seen the tsunamis. We have seen the effect of many of these. Men's hearts failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Don't we see it around us? For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, I'm saying to you, boys and girls, I'm saying to you all, in this crisis, let us look up because the storm will end one day. There is deliverance at the end of the road. We can take a lesson from the destruction of Jerusalem. Life was good. Although the Jews were under Roman rule, but life was good. And that is why the disciples were able to come to Jesus and say, look at the beautiful temple. They came to show him the beauty of the temple. Life was good. But then Jesus said it wouldn't last forever. He told them that distress was coming. Some heeded his warning and some didn't. Some took him serious, some didn't. But then in AD 66, into 67 there was a siege you know what a siege is give me another word for siege lockdown there was a lockdown yes under their circumstances the lockdown was caused because invading armies surrounded the city 
But the effect was the same. The effect was that nobody could go in or come out. Distress followed inside. People could not get food. People were anxious. Fortunately, the armies withdrew. And so there was a reprieve. Thankfully, that lockdown was not the ultimate. And I hope that the lockdown that has been happening in various places is not the ultimate. I pray that there will be a reprieve. Because, as you're aware, after that reprieve, the armies came and there was another siege in AD 70. There was a lockdown again. But from this second lockdown, there was no reprieve. And I'm saying to us, in Jamaica, we say, take sleep and mark death. What we are seeing now is the beginning of sorrows. There's worse to come. We need to prepare our minds. We should not despair when we see these things. The reason why these warnings have been given is to prepare us. After that second lockdown, there was destruction. Millions of Jews died. The temple was destroyed. As Jesus prophesied, there was not left one stone upon another that was not thrown down. But God's people who heeded Jesus' warning were spared. Because during the reprieve, they did what Jesus told them to do. Our circumstances are different today. So the response might not be the same. But if our eyes are opened and we are studying the prophecies, we will know what to do when. Ultimately, our hope is in God. Our hope is a hope of eternal life. The Bible tells us that if only in this life we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 19. It says, in, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But thank God our hope is beyond this life. Now, don't get me wrong. Life here is important. Having a hope of eternity does not mean that we should be careless with life here or be unmindful of people in our dealings with them here and now. We should show sympathy we should love others. We should pray for healing. Just yesterday, a few days ago, my wife told me of a friend of hers, a former batchmate, when she was studying, a nurse who is in New York. 
she was very ill. Very ill with the COVID-19. When I heard the news, I was so distressed. My wife was so distressed. Because this is someone that we both know very well. And when I heard that she was very sick and she could hardly even speak, it was most distressing. But thank God, that was what it was earlier in the week. Yesterday, they spoke and she said she was feeling much better. And I believe God may have responded to some of the prayers that were sent up on her behalf. So the point is we should not just accept that because of COVID-19 and because Jesus prophesied that there would be pestilences and that people would die, we should just take it for granted and say, well, okay, it, it, will, it can't be any different anyway. We must do the best we can. We must pray for others. And we must extend our hands to help those who are hurting. We should also practice healthy habits. As the government has encouraged us to, proper, to practice proper hygiene, wash our hands. And I've brought my sanitizer with me. Some people say that if you trust God, why do you need sanitizer? God did not promise us that if we do things carelessly to expose ourselves, that he's going to step in and deliver us. He did not promise us that. So we should practice good habits to help to keep ourselves healthy. But if that's all we do, we are woefully short. Because all the healthy habits will not make us live forever. And even if we escape COVID-19, we won't live forever just in the present order of things. So we have to look up both for support and deliverance from the present distress, but more importantly, for deliverance from sin and its consequences in this world. The Bible says, These things, John 16 and verse 33, Jesus said, These things have I spoke unto you, that ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In Matthew 10 and verse 16, it says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Verse 22. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. What does it mean to endure unto the end? It means being faithful unto death. Revelation 2 and verse 10. The Bible says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that he may be tried, and he shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, 
and I will give thee a crown of life. The Bible tells us that Abraham looked for a city. Hebrews 11 and verse 8 through to 10 it says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the hearers with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. The writer of the Hebrews spoke of other faithful persons who had a similar hope. Verse 13, he says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. We are told in Romans 4 and verse 13 that the promise to Abraham was that he would be here of the world. It says, for the promise that he should be here of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So the promise to Abraham was not ultimately a promise of earthly success, even although he got that. Because God is not unmindful of our success here. He blesses us here also but ultimately as the Bible says what does it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what will a man give in exchange for his soul and so John saw that city in Revelation 21 and verse 1 it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. But before the holy city comes down, Christ will return and he will save his people from the distress that is here present and from other distresses that will come. We are told in 1 Thessalonians 4, reading from verse 13, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. And I refer to this particular passage of scripture, especially for those who have lost loved ones already and for those who may yet lose loved ones because this COVID-19 pandemic has been claiming lives. We hear the statistics every day. The assurance is given. It says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain 
unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. If we die during this pandemic, or if we die by other means, that's not the end of it. We have a hope that Christ is coming again. He's coming not as a babe in a manger, but he's coming to redeem his faithful children. He's coming to raise from the dead those who trusted in him. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 that he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And I'm here to assure you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, wherever you are, in whatever country you are, if you trust in Jesus. He says I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the father but by me. He says him that cometh to me. I will in no wise cast out. If we are faithful. We have a hope. That whatever happens. We will be resurrected. Please share this hope with your loved ones. That even if they pass off and go to sleep before Christ returns, they can be assured that at the first resurrection, at the last trump, they will rise from the grave. They will rise in immortal youth. They can be a part of what John saw when he said, I saw a new heaven. And a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem. Coming down from God. Out of heaven. Prepared as a bride. Adorned for her husband. I invite you to join with me as we sing. Last night I lay asleeping there came a dream so fair I stood in old Jerusalem Beside the temple there I heard the children sing And ever as they sang We thought the voice of angels From heaven in answer rang We thought the voice of angels from heaven in answer Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your gates and sing. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to Oh, oh. 
Sea. The light of God was on its streets, the gates were open wide, and all who would might enter, and no one was denied. No need of moon nor stars by night, no sun to shine by day. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. It was the new Jerusalem that would not pass away. desire to be a part of the new earth if it is your desire to be able to live with Christ and the redeemed throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity if you want to share in this hope of eternal life I invite you to pray with me before we pray I want to make a special appeal to those who have not yet accepted Christ if you have not yet committed your life to Christ if you have fallen off in your commitment if you would like to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, accept me. Lord, save me. I invite you, wherever you are, the angels of God are taking note. Just raise your hand where you are. Even if you are in your living room. Wherever you are. Just raise your hand. If this is your desire. The Bible says. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one with another. And the Lord heartened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written. For them that th thought upon the Lord and spoke upon his name. If you want to be among the number, I invite you 
Just raise your hand where you are and bow your head with me as we pray. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your love and mercies. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the assurance of eternal life. We thank you for the promise that you have made that has given us hope beyond this life. We thank you for the assurance that you have given that even through this COVID-19 pandemic or whatever other form of distress, you hear and answer our prayers and we can have healing and we can have peace in our hearts. We commit into your hands our loved ones, our relatives and friends. We commit into your hands your people across the length and breadth of this nation and across the world. We commit your people. We commit this world into your hands, dear Lord. We're asking you to have mercy on us. Bear with us. And even as we look to you in repentance and faith, we're asking you to forgive us of our sins, we pray, dear Father. And grant us a place in your kingdom. Bless this nation. Bless your people. And especially those who seek to minister to those who are sick and grieving and suffering. And those who seek to bring the gospel of truth and the hope of eternal life to others. Look down on them in a special way and grant them your blessings. Dear Father, those who have raised their hands from wherever they are in their homes or wherever they are listening to this message we're asking you dear father to have mercy on them give them peace of mind grant them forgiveness grant them forgiveness and grant them cleansing so that they will not turn back from their commitment to you. And at last, when Christ shall put in his appearing, that, that we all will be among the redeemed, whether to be alive, to look up in the eastern sky, to see him appear, to, to see him burst the clouds, and be able to say, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us or whether we will be among those who will be resurrected to eternal life. Help that we all will be among the host of the redeemed. These we humbly ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn will be 434, We Speak of the Realm. The first and the last stanza. Oh, oh, oh. 
before we depart, we have a special request. One of our, a pastor who has been streaming this broadcast from Hampton District, Hampton Court District, who has been having some difficulties because some persons say that the broadcast openly of the live stream is disturbing to them. And so they wanted him to stop. And he has asked us to pray for him and his church and for his ministry so that the way will be opened for him to continue to minister to those in his community to continue to bring these live streams to those around and to his congregation that they might be able to hear be inspired and be drawn to the Lord without impediment of his apparatus being shut down or it being a bother to anyone. And so we want to lift him up in prayer. And I invite you to join me as we pray. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your love and your mercies. We commit into your hands our dear pastor, your servant, who seeks to have the gospel of truth shared with others, to inspire them, to have hope, so that they may, might look to you in faith. We commit into your hands the impediments that he has been having. We're asking you, dear Father, to, to touch the hearts of those who would find his ministry disturbing. We commit them into your hands. Help that they will see the value of persons being inspired to have hope. Help that they will see the value of the encouragement for persons to look to you, dear Father. Dear Father, we commit into your hands our dear pastor from Hampton Court District. Continue to bless his ministry and those who are being benefited from it. And help that his ministry will continue. Bless this church, Mavis Bank, Seventh-day Adventist Church. Bless our pastor here and continue to use your people far and wide to spread hope in a suffering world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to thank you all for watching those who have been following from our live feed and those who will watch this program on YouTube or through any other mechanism or platform that is available we thank you for watching and we invite you to tune in again with us to the Mavis Bank Seventh-day Adventist Church page, YouTube channel, and join us as we continue to worship from Sabbath to Sabbath during this COVID-19 challenge. And for those who would like to contribute to the continuation of this work, we invite you to contact our pastor or the elders of the Mavis Bank Seventh-day Adventist Church and for those who have heard the message and would like to give your life to the Lord we invite you to make contact our pastor and the elders are ready to pray with you and to study with you and to assist you in your sojourn and in your desire.
to walk with the Lord. So, all the very best. Keep strong. Be faithful. And may the Lord bless you richly. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, live, I want to say a big thanks to Elder Giles, Professor Giles, for taking the time out to come and share the word of God with us. I want to thank him very much and his family. Uh, I want to send greetings to his wife and his children for allowing him to come out in such a stormy weather to come and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my friend and my uh, colleague in Jesus Christ. Thank you for sharing the word of God. And for those who are uh, checking to say, you know, you know, see me that I'm at church. I want to say thank you for joining us. God bless you. Join us for AY when the young people will be leading out in the AY uh, program, which will be about 3 p.m. God bless you and stay sweet in Jesus' name.